Hello, hello. This is Johannes Wotry from Holturan. Today will be the first uh, video introduction, uh, video recorded introduction on my channel. I just purchased cool webcam just for this one and uh, we'll have three topics that I want to talk about today. It's going to be about the future of uh, consumer electronic integration in in the field of my uh, heavy industry. It's going to be all about web servers because finally the mainstream CPU controller, CPU manufacturers, that those are the devices that actually make the uh, machines, robots, whatever, to uh, control themselves. It's about the web server integration availability these days. And um, we're, we're going to be talking about AI, how it's going to affect my life and uh, how it's going to affect specific, specifically the mobile and the um, heavy industry safety engineering relate, related topics and uh, the future of the YouTube channel. Okay, let's start from the first topic, which will be the heavy industry automation system integrations and the mobile. And the question is, why is it on, on the surface right now? Well, automation, especially on the heavy industry, has been kind of an isolated island so far. It's been isolated because there hasn't been effective way to uh, integrate uh, these consumer electronic solutions and data handling systems into into the automation controllers. They there is no standardization between these, such as it is on the uh, consumer electronic side. And um, it's been really conservative so far, which I believe it's not that good because the heavy industry has been left behind. And uh, there's going to be big changes coming. And uh, I believe it's going to happen in the breakthrough is going to happen pretty soon. Because we are now seeing the uh, the tech, the automation tech, the the uh, the controllers themselves directly. They are maturing. We are getting secure connections via HTTPS. It's going to be about web servers, REST API, uh, socket ba based real time communications directly into into the heart of the machine. And uh, it's going to be also about edge server type solutions that can sort. Uh, store high resolution data at the same time these two solutions will bring a high high value uh, solutions for on the field of heavy industry automation uh, and of course mobile and why mobile because mobile will still be i see the near future mobile will be the first hand experience for everyday users. I'm not talking about that you need a controller room to get your hands on. There's going to be a, a, a marginal of, of personal in, in, in a company that can access that type of data. We need access for every type of user. It doesn't matter who he is. And it's going to be through mobile. So what can the mobile do better than the uh, the control UI of the uh, heavy industry machine itself. Well, it's dynamic. It's not fixed in in the form of the nature of it. So, and as we can all see, the consumer electronics is way far more advanced in in data handling and in programming environmental requirements as the controllers themselves. So the controllers themselves are always their inherent nature is to control the device. They are not designed for complex data manipulation uh, requirements or let's say stunning visualizations or the nature is never dynamic. It doesn't change its form from of what it is. But instead the mobile, okay, we can reach now everyday users 
of, of that specific target, whether it's a manager, whether it's a maintenance guy, whether it's an operator, whether it's a safety, safety guy making his annual checks. And mobile is the window that we can manipulate and use like a game. Okay, so if we program something on the mobile, it can change its form, it can adapt, we can release OTA, auto updates, and uh, all, of course at the same time, because it's not fixed, everyone in the background will get the same new features and interact with, with the data communication directly into the controller with new features. So that's the point, that's the whole point of, of this how I see the future coming on, on the, uh, and changing the nature of the heavy industry automation. So, but okay, it's been, it's taking quite a while because until these days, the, um, the tech, the control tech has been immature to uh, support any kind of a real time integration from mobile systems, but it's going to change and once the big waves start to hit, uh, there's going to be many players uh, uh, coming into the field of automation. That's how I see it. And luckily, our industry is working on, on multiple sectors at the time and building proof of concepts, how these can be utilized for the future. And it looks really awesome at this point. So how will the... Um, the AI affect my life on, on the field of heavy industry and especially on the uh, safety engineering related topics and solutions and of course on the field of mobile development. So let's first take a look at the, uh, the heavy industry and safety engineering. Many of you might not even know what I'm talking about but pretty much in short I try to give you a definition of safety engineering on heavy industry. So the machine is controlled, it is causing multiple risks because it, let's say it can lift a 10,000 kilogram weight of mass and just drop it if it wants to or crush somebody in, in between. So there's going to be a safety layer implemented into the controls of this machine to ensure that it cannot cause any harm. There's various type of uh, fields of safety engineering, you can see them, the robot powers might be limited so that when it in the, operates in the near proximity of a, of, a, of a human, it knows to limit its powers, these kind of solutions. Okay, so the AI on the heavy industry, I believe it's gonna bring us the capability to uh, design selective safety functions to, to start with. These days, the safety functions are pretty much absolute. What it means is that it's either true or it's either false or uh, the limited powers are above the uh, maximum allowed or they are beyond and there has to be a reaction to uh, stop the movements, pretty much. Okay, selective functions. The safety function based on higher uh, analysis of uh, background running AI based, for instance, machine vision might bring us the selective operation and nature of the safety functions. It detects, it should do absolute uh, safety function because the uh, elements change the state, safeguarding the machine, but at the same time, there might be cross conflict analytic methods being implemented and which are signaling the machine that, hey, you don't need to react now because there's no human yet involved in here, or we've detected this is a higher uh, um, great human who can, who knows how to operate within these dangerous circumstances. So it's not forced to make the safety function into absolute, but at the same time, upkeep its uh, limited functionality and uh, stay in between mode. So something like that possibly, or the safety devices themselves, which are pretty sophisticated these days, they have high, high level anal analytical diagnostics. 
might have these functions built in so they make the decisions for us if we allow the AI to run in, in inside of these machines. So of course there's going to be programming level solutions and uh, which the uh, machine manufacturers can, can design and teach and learn for that specific uh, uh, field of uh, hydraulics, electrics or motor based power uh, uh, supplies generative systems and how will the AI affect the, the mobile development well the mobile development has different kind of a purpose as a solution and uh, it requires a whole lot of a text input based code and what we can all already see that I'm, I'm anxious to wait the, um, the new version for instance for the Android Studio because there's going to be AI, AI uh, hel helping assistant implemented. That's going to be one of the coolest use cases. Because these days, the, uh, the pretty much the AI can produce you a, a short glimpse and give you a concept of probable, probable, probable solution to uh, design your uh, uh, app or solution or it can give you fast insight for the code uh, libraries that you need to use and it can give you a fast con concept and idea of the uh, how to build it so this is something that I'm waiting because there is the libraries let's say the the powerful libraries that that we should use to start with I mean we just don't know them all and uh, if, we, if we can get fast uh, inside of what to do, how to how to run it, even to get the uh, the sketch code sketch from the uh, editor itself to use the native methods, that that'd be super cool. That in the let's say the next version of Android Studio, for instance, is gonna bring a whole not whole another level uh, for this use case. So. There's so much of, um, can the AI replace, totally replace coders in, in general? I believe they can start generating code, a mass, a, let's, let's call a mass of code in a fast phase. But then who's going to integrate that between the layers of, uh, let's say, in the full stack development? Who's going to integrate those into the, uh, into the big picture? Who's going to talk with the customer who's gonna who's gonna be the middleman between between the digital and the physical world so that's gonna be the coder or some human but I will be my, me personally I'll be implementing AI as my assistant in the future and uh, one big field that I see that I'll be using AI in, in the field of coding also it's gonna be that's gonna be like the my personal assistant probably to integrate cross-platform mobile applications. There's al already a ways to uh, design the Kotlin and KMM multi-platform projects to uh, release your app into the iOS and also into the Android. And I have a hunch. I believe the AI will play a big role also to remove these barriers between these systems because probably we can start generating, migrating our well-written Android application way faster into the iOS also. So I believe that KMM multi-platform, Kotlin multi-platform at the end of the day will take the advance of the AI-based uh, assistant also. So it's gonna tear down. Uh, in my mind, it's gonna tear down these these brick walls between different system application platforms. Okay, the last topic today is the future of my YouTube channel. First of all, I just love making any kind of videos. I don't think that uh, I will stop this any any anytime soon. But the more I, the more videos I see myself doing, it's gonna be 
different kind of uh, topics involved. These kind of a uh, general uh, vlogging chat types of videos probably. But at the same time, because I love to code and uh, I want to continue making coding videos. So I'm sorry guys, the most of the time that I, I code, I don't have the, uh, the possibility to stop and uh, record it. And pretty much I'm either coding the mobile application on my, for my daily, daily works, which is sensitive in, in nature or I'm coding my production application, developing my production personal applications. And it's like um, also sensitive in nature. I don't want to share everything. And uh, but if I can, I try to make more of these mini projects when I find and learn how, how to do something cool. Uh, probably I make more of those mini mini project based how to code and uh, but if if, if the um, the topic is too big I have to make a walkthrough video because sometimes it is just impossible to make a mini mini project uh, when it's full stack related implementation because I cannot just put up my uh, uh, a, t a new server at any time or fiddle around with my production server or share everything what is happening in inside my uh, production apps but uh, anyhow I, I I code I release YouTube videos because I just love to do it and uh, of course I have 100 subscribers so my my YouTube channel isn't big but uh, I, I like any of you over there and thanks for supporting my channel